Okay, this is the September 7th Lodging Tax Advisory Committee meeting, 2016, and this is Fred Chang, Chair. Uh, why don't we go around and just introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Fred Chang, I'm the Chair of the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee. Kathy Michael, owner of Cedar Cove Inn. Uh, Chan Park um, from the Comfort Inn. Janine Floyd, City of Port Orchard. Bobby Stewart, uh, President of the Bay Street Association. I'm Brandy Rainierson, City Clerk. City Jesse, of Orchard. Jesse Turner, representing Fathoms of Fun. Christine Stansbury, City Museum and Arts Association. Okay, well that's number one, that was easy. Okay, uh, the review of the Lodging Tax <coughs> Funding Regulations Reporting. Randy, do you want to lead on that one, or is it pretty self-explanatory? Basically, I just, from what I understand, there's nothing that's changed from uh, the RCW legislative um, uh, statutes from last year to this year, but in case you lost your file, well, we have some new members as well, so here is a new uh, printout of RCW 6728, which governs the lodging tax funding and committee and all of the alike. That's for there for you, um, and then I will send you guys an email. That um, I apologize, but I just had this and did not include it as part of the packet. But I will. Um, so there was some conversations um, last year about the legislators uh, when they changed the the what do you call it the. Um, how the lodging tax committee makes the recommendations to the council and whether the council can change those, accept them, deny it, whatever. In the past, um, at least for this uh, city council, they have um, um, changed the dollars amount uh, from what the committee has recommended. And so based on all the training and from what um, we received from uh, MRSC at the time that you know what the committee recommends has to go before council they can accept it deny it um, or send it back to the committee um, but they could not change the amounts okay so that's how everything was uh, uh, treated and um, uh, relate to everybody and so what you know at the same time for this year's um, they've gone back we looked at the RCWs and said no that's not the intent and so they even sought the Attorney General's opinion on it and so the Agen Attorney General's opinion has come back and says that's not try quite true so the lodging tax committee is an advisory committee only and so they can make recommendations to the council the council has final action so they however Again, they can accept it, change it, um, um, and or deny it and send it back to the committee. Um, what they did elaborate on is if the council chooses to change the amount from what the committee recommends, it has to go back for the committee for their recommendation. Or comments. Or comments. comments. Yeah, comments, actually, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it has to go back to the committee for them to at least discuss, talk about it, either agree with the recommendation, come up with a different recommendation, but they, it still has to go back to the committee for consideration, okay. and then that recommendation has to be brought before the council. The council can take that under consideration, and it's my understanding they can now, at that point, do whatever they want because the, count, the committee's already discussed it. And what, what you're talking about is the clarification and do we have can you email it yes okay. i'll email that to yeah, you the clarification tonight. is there was another step that we didn't weren't aware of uh, previously and this is that the council can sort of i'm not going to say recommendation because that word's overused but the council can decide if they want to fund a certain entity that's up to the council uh, then, if they but apply if, if it's different than the recommendation from the right. committee it would come back to the committee for comment the committee can say pro or negative, but then it goes back to the council to actually vote on, and they have the final say in that sense. Correct. Uh, so yeah. it wasn't clear in the past. In the past, we did not believe that the council could recommend any amounts, but that's not the case, mm -hmm. at least from this attorney general opinion. Right. Wasn't it an AG opinion or AAG? I don't, I don't remember. Um, Assistant attorney general or attorney general. But it, it was AG's It was a clarification that came out recently. So... Um, with that in mind, and we'll probably discuss it more under number five, we did get a comment from the chamber, and let's talk about that under number five under contract review, where he was asking for clar 
he wanted this committee to have clarification of what he thought this committee should do. So we'll, we'll talk about that during number five. And I think you were there, Bobby. So I you was. Were, yeah, okay. So so uh, that's that's the RCW. Um, again, I apologize for not having this, but I'll get this out to you guys tonight. Do you guys have it? Or if you want a copy, just remind me before we go and I'll give you a printed copy. <laughs> so that's the what's new that's changed there. And then um, um, item B is the 2015 JLAR report. So of the lodging tax state? recipients. Can you um, explain this? Or maybe just take a walk through one. This of is the number one. of reports. So I can tell you right now that the report, when it says grand total, the grand total is not the numbers for 2015. It's 2014 and 2015. But it did not allow me to manipulate anything. And so it just had a, and I can email this to you guys as well. Um, it's, it's pretty. Well, can we look at like the Port Orchard numbers, for example? I'm already confused where we have a total activity cost that I don't know how that relates to. So it's all of the submitted a report, it's the total. So whatever number they put in there is what is the total. They, you mean the recipients? Mm -hmm. So they're saying that they spent that amount. So and we sure. only funded like um, 104. Let me get up here. So Port Orchard for all of our all attendance. Let me see. Oh, funds awarded. Okay, so funds requested. Um, yep, and then funds awarded 104, and then total activity costs. So that right there it says. Uh, um, so if somebody says, hey, for example, I'll use Fathom. So Fathom has an event that they put on, and they use part of that marketing, whatever, for um, um, lodging tax for marketing that particular event they included the total cost to put that event on. So if it cost $50,000 to put that event on, they put it, but they only used 10000 for marketing or whatever. Okay, so, so that's the total expenditures of all the activities, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, and that is... That's a big number. I'm sorry, Fred, what page are you? Um, I, it's not a number page, and that's but it's the And that's requested on the, the report. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's just walk through. It says that you know funds requested is 138,000, mm -hmm. funds awarded 104,000, total activity was 636,000. So I wondered like, what is that number? So That's apparently what everyone else And spends. for like the chamber mm -hmm. or whoever put in marketing, so they had a marketing plan and they were requesting $50,000 from the city of Port Richard for marketing, but it's $100,000 for all of their marketing because they do South Kitsap, but those aren't real numbers. But so, you know, they spent $100,000 on marketing for South Kitsap area. That's what the report wanted, but they only um, spent 50,000 because that's what they requested for lodging tax. They said this is 2014 plus 2015. Just the grand total. These are 2015 numbers, but when you go down to the grand total on that last page, that 101 million <coughs> is for 2014 and 2015. Oh, for everybody, okay, yeah. I'm and if you want, I can send you this report and you'll see what I'm talking about. It'll have um, a little plus, something? it'll have okay. 15, okay. and then it'll have a little plus under 14, and then it drops everything for 2014 below it. So rather than yeah, we write 15 pages. Um, so. so what I found interesting from this, looking at this is that the gray area looks like what was projected for example the overall attendance projected and then to the right is the actual mm -hmm. so whereas the um, overall projected attendance was 1.1 million it looks like the actual was close to 2 million or 1.9 million so mm -hmm. I don't know I mean, I don't know how they got these numbers, but they're interesting, and they're We're certainly saying impressive. We're two million people. <laughs> well, that's what this—that's what this report is saying. I'm not saying that. And I'm saying that's what this report is saying. I mean, is that your understanding? And how are these numbers? Well, do we know? I mean, I can <coughs> provide you copies of the um, what each person submitted. Hmm. No, it's interesting. I'm, I'm not arguing. I'm just trying to understand what they say. So it's all the happened. numbers. Committed. So. What the report does not capture is that this report overall attendance really isn't overall attendance because it's quadruple dipped, meaning 
that oh, the crews okay. put in their efforts. Oh. They said the crews said so many people attended. So on the same weekend, POBSA is holding an event. So they accounted for the probably the same numbers that the crews did for people coming walking down, plus 10% because more people came to Bobby's store than they went to the cruise. So same thing for the Sydney Arts Museum. So that's what they did is they just took all of those numbers and combined them together, not realizing that, oh, most of some of these events are on the same day, you know, whatever. Same I don't know. people. Right, same people. <laughs> Coming to the same place. Right. And, and the so, question, the council will be made aware of that, that they don't look and think we suddenly had. I think the council will have more questions about this than we do here. Um, you know, we're 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 looking at the methodology of evil. You know, I can't argue that these numbers are wrong. They just all seem kind of big. Oh, but really, Fred? <laughs> what? Okay, can we comprehend I mean, do you think the wrong scope of two million people in downtown Port Orchard? Well, let's divide that by fifty-two weeks. By it seems well, like it seems like the city of Port Orchard had more than the. Pierce County. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, that is very troubling. That's yeah. a good comparison so, yeah, there. Yeah, I yes. think we're looking, trying to comprehend the impact of two million people coming into the city of Port Orchard. <laughs> Let's just go over, you know, if we make it really easy, um, by 10 months, assuming 60 days out of the year, maybe nobody really shows up. Um, 100,000 a month? Yeah, come on. <laughs> You okay, wouldn't well, notice, Fred. Hmm? You wouldn't notice. No, yeah. you know, it's, it seemed a little more well, crowded, huh? But well, I'm very <laughs> concerned about this being accurately understood by a council that always tends to want to change the well, numbers. Well, I have a feeling we'll it. just reject these numbers as being, oh, I don't know what they'll say, but these these are interesting numbers. Um, is this the first, why is my phone, yeah, he's asking if you can help me. Um, <laughs> No. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I, I can search the web for on this list. No. Usually, if I say "Hey Siri," the phone will talk back. But Actually, I don't think that I said "Hey Siri." What? I actually don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> that was an appropriate comment. Um, now these are interesting, and it's it's nice to have numbers. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe the accurate number is just a fraction of, of what they're presenting, and we don't know. But. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like, huh. So and I think when you click on the city of Port Orchard or one of the numbers, and you, I think you can do that for each jurisdiction. When you click on it on the spreadsheet, it'll actually pull up the one report that the city submitted. So I input this by each person that gave this to me, and then it does a, a total. So, I mean, but again, if you want to see the, each individual ones, I'd be happy to either provide it to you guys at the next committee, email them all to you. Uh, whatever the committee wants. So if you want to see those individual reports, just let me know. You know what's interesting is, I, I don't know if they would, they might help. Um, I don't know. Um, That's, if, I just report is, what's been reported to the city. That's interesting. If you look at Bainbridge or even Bremerton, Bremerton only had 185000 for the whole year. So that helps put some perspective on these numbers, I think. Yeah, um, right. They're probably... Inflated by at least 10 times too big, maybe? Okay. Yeah, well, when you compare it with comparable, like you get down to um, Spokane, which is significantly larger than. Oh, King County or Seattle or something. Seattle. Seattle isn't broken out, is it? Um, I'm mm -hmm. just trying to look at you know, the one about the same. Or even Kitsap County. I oh, know Kitsap County is a big number, so. How many Who knows? Is One point five million. Yeah, was, uh, of which Kitsap we're, County. We're, which we're almost <clears throat> yeah. what two thirds of that? One point nine. Yeah. Very interesting. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So, I just am concerned that the council not look at this and go, oh my goodness, we have that. The revenue that we've brought in wouldn't necessarily no, support I don't. that. <coughs> That does fall into question the, the overall. Is smarter than that. Well, yeah, yeah. I think um, it does call into question though all of their figures, doesn't it? But um, okay, I think we've talked about that enough. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for doing that. Sure. Good job. And then um, the next one is the committee timeline. Um, basically, 
Um, I just did a real rough timeline. Um, obviously, we're meeting today. Um, hopefully, um, the committee can go over the application and um, either approve to form or provide some direction so staff can get it um, uh, out and advertised. Um, I'm assuming three weeks might be enough time. I don't know. But assuming the committee is comfortable with um, us opening up the application for September 9th um, and closing on October 3rd. So September 9th is a Friday and October 3rd is a Monday. Um, so that gives roughly about three weeks. Um, and then you guys would have that week of October 3rd to uh, pick up the application to review it. Hopefully interview the applicants the week of October 10th. And then uh, the committee can discuss um, the following week, October 17th. Um, it's going to be crunched uh, because um, uh, we need to hopefully have a recommendation to the uh, council at the October 18th work study session. So um, if that's not the case, we can brief, I can brief the council and let them know that it will be at the November's work study session. Um, so I know that they will be hard pressed to Does get. Does it need to be a work study? Do you remember why? Um, the resolution states that it's supposed to go before the council, which I'll already provide them an update in September that the committee has not met and does not have a recommendation in, for September. So um, uh, city resolution states that the lodging tax is supposed to provide a recommendation to the council at the September's work study session. So. Oh, I'm just wondering why it had to be a work study. Like, could it be? I don't know. That's just what okay. um, the previous administration, uh, previous clerk, and the previous council at, at that time <coughs> uh, worked out. I mean, if we don't make the October 18th, could it be the 25th? I mean, you can go before a regular council, council meeting. Okay. Um, because that might I know be a that more probably flexible. October, it's budget time. Yeah. And um, But I'm sure we'll have maybe a light agenda or two that we can present it to the council and it may even be better because they can uh, take action that night if everything all goes well but um they're going to want to they always want to discuss yeah. it so that was why it was work study so that they could discuss it okay so we'll aim for it by ten eighteen. so so in this outline you'll see it's you guys have it it's just um uh on number six um, so, tw so um, before we get, I guess, into the meat of the meeting, so projected revenue, so the uh, treasurer's office has projected, um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but the city is moving into a biennial budget, and biennial, yeah, biennial budget, so 2017-2018, uh, so they've projected the number for $190,000 for over the two-year period. Um, I did review the RCWs. Um, I will, uh, based at the committee's recommendation on how they want to proceed with this year and, and next year's uh, funding allocations, um, seek with le speak with legal counsel to see if they want to open it up for a two-year span or if you want to do it each year. Um, the RCWs was pretty silent. Um, so if the committee has a strong recommendation one way or the other, then I can run it by legal counsel and get their blessing. Do so we know what the individual breakdown is. Is it 95 each year? I mean, is he just pulling a number out of a hat? Yes. Okay. So it, no, it, it's, you have to project it somehow. She explained it to me that what it is is that she's done a projection for 2017. And, that's and then based <laughs> off of the last couple years increase, of, based off of the last year's revenue, last couple years of revenue, she's done that. And then she took just a straight up percentage and increased it the following year. She goes, so if the committee wants to do 100,000 one year and 90,000 the next year, she goes, it doesn't, it's indif they're indifferent. So, but she does not recommend that you do 190,000 in one year because then the second year, if the revenue There's falls nothing. short, you've already paid it out and well, we so wouldn't it's negative. Well, we wouldn't do that. But right, but. What, it looks like they're projecting 95 for each year. Mm -hmm. So maybe 90 first year and 100 the second year. Um, I'm indifferent. Well, I'm not indifferent. I'm, um, you know, I don't have a preference if it's one or two years. But what I'm concerned about is the application. Uh, can all the applicants? Do they know how to apply for two years worth of? Well, it'll stay in the application. And are they prepared for that? Um, 
Yeah. I don't yeah. think so, Fred. I, I think we'd be better off having annually. everybody apply annually, annually because I agree. because things change. You yeah. know, events change. Yeah. Plans yeah. change. Took the words right out of my mouth. It's hard to project things one change. year, let alone two yeah. years. Yeah. 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 There's very few that can project for two years. Very, very few. I think most probably it would be. You know. I could, but other than that. For Sydney, but other than that, I don't think anybody else could. But we could tell them because maybe in the future it could, it could move towards a two year. Um, no one else is doing it though. The county isn't, the Bremerton isn't doing it. Paul suppose not either, right? Yeah. Did we check? I don't, I don't remember. remember. I don't <laughs> either. The are <coughs> different, anyways. They got uh, a. Amounts. No, well, why the change? What's the impetus behind changing it? Just because we're moving to a biennial budget, oh, same the thing. The city's budget is uh, going to be every two yeah. years. So just so, wanted to give the, yeah. the, op <coughs> the option to the Well, I would committee. say it looks unanimous, unanimous only right. as no, it should buy. I think it makes sense. Yeah. And, it, and like I said, yeah. nobody was leaning one way or the other, but we wanted to give the option. Perfect. He's projecting it because he's got a biennial budget. That's what he's projecting over the next two years. Okay. So, so are, do you think if we just do one year, we're safe for 95? Or we you Oh. And I and which is higher than last year. Last year I think it was forecast at eighty eighty five. Eighty four, I think is what I remember. So this is it's nice. Ninety five thousand. Eighty four. <clears throat> okay, so okay. So let's let's I, take so ninety five as a question working because the revenue all comes from hotel motels and we've not increased the number of lodging facilities in this town. Why the projected increase? Um, she You're explains, raising your rates. <laughs> no, she like ten percent. <laughs> she did say that the projected number. She said that she can. It's um, the. Uh, I don't know what her title is, but um, she's the one that does the the budgeting for the city. And so she said that um, when she, the, they project, they do estimates monthly. And she says that each month this year, with an exception of one month, they have um, exceeded their um, estimate. And she says that, that she does see the incline, um, but she doesn't have any rhyme or reason as to what would indicate why. Because um, it's the same thing. Obviously, we haven't increased any uh, rooms. So... She's not quite sure. Well, you know, it always increases yeah. month to month to get through the end of September, mid-October. I mean, have you had higher occupancy this year than last year in general, would you say? Or, I saw a little increase. Yeah. A little, well, so yeah. a little more occupancy. Um, mm -hmm. And then our, I mean, our numbers are two months behind your numbers. So <coughs> your numbers in May is our number, numbers in July because you it goes to the state. Right one month and then 30 days later it comes to the city so um and i don't I, I, that's just what they told me two months behind so i don't know if it's calculated in the report that he gets if may is may or what that part i don't know um, i just i just asked because my biggest concern is that we don't put our nonprofits, our people that do all the work in a position of a certain amount of funds. But in case it drops. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. I yes. would rather yeah. I'd rather have it overflow yeah. to the next year and more to count on than to ever fall short. And this thing. year will be the first year that you guys could could actually use a, a carryover because once based I think in the last couple of years is once he gives us that number, he's projecting that's the number. He's not doing a fund balance. He's not doing the beginning balance. He's not doing projected revenues separate from the fund balance. He's allocating 195,000 period or 190,000 period. So you want to include it, whatever the previous balance was. I don't know. He doesn't. I don't, and I don't what happens when we don't get that? It's just shortfall on the city's mm -hmm. part. Yeah. So if we overproject the first year, then there's going to be a shortfall the second year. That's why we're going to do it annually, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know this committee tends to be cautious, so we may decide, or the committee decide, may decide to just allocate for 90000 instead of 95 or something. Yeah, and I know the last couple of years, the committee's been doing a reserve, and I think 10%, if I remember correctly, of whatever is allocated has been, I think, in the reserve. Um, so maybe 85 mm, The year before uh, was 84 yeah, I think so, yeah. And I think last year, all 84,000 was allocated. 
There wasn't. There was um, the the conversation that there would probably be um, carryover in the amount that they would typically have for the reserve. So uh, there wasn't a reserve held, and then they uh, chose to allocate off eighty four thousand. That's what I recall. That's helpful for the projected revenue. So check that <coughs> there's some yeah. flexibility there. Uh, I just wrote down ninety-five thousand. We can adjust yeah, that. Yeah, eighty-four thousand. Um, up or down? <laughs> Depending on. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, well, let's move on to the next. So contract one. review. Um, I provided a copy of the contract that the lodging tax recipients um, signed this year. And it's hopefully pages. I got everything correct. Mini drafts floating around. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard any concerns about the contract from people who signed it or didn't want to sign so, it? So um, I think Janine probably got the, the brunt of most of them, but um, <laughs> we've got conflicting. So we have... Um, I don't remember who they were now, but one um, was confused about the exhibits as to why the um, lodging tax application would be attached. Um, and so they felt that that lodging tax application should not be attached and what should be attached is a revised budget. And then we had the other one that says, no, it doesn't make sense to have a revised budget. We need to have the lodging tax attached. So the we're different attached. as long yeah. as they're Spending it based on the RCW, we're indifferent. I mean, the contract protects the city in that if they don't use it based on what it's for, they're not going to get reimbursed. So, which, which item was that? So was it an item here specifying Exhibit One or something? Or? Um, it's uh, four. It's item four, page two, full payment in consideration of the organization's performance of services identified in the lodging tax application as it Exhibit okay. A. Some felt it should be a budget and not the application itself because, and, and I did fail to mention this to you guys, and I believe one of the reasons why is because the application states that um, typically is, states a different amount than what's awarded. Mm -hmm. So the perception okay. is mm -hmm. that they spent thirty thousand dollars, well, whatever the number yes. is, and really they only were awarded ten thousand. So that's the reason why they didn't want the application attached to the contract. They preferred a revised scope or a revised budget. And who was gonna revise that? Were they gonna revise that? Yes. Okay. What did and the think? people that made that we updated their contract and just basically um, said that. I was fine with the application simply because it described what you wanted to do. What we were going to do without specifically stating we were going to spend, you know, four thousand dollars for advertising and two hundred dollars for newspaper. I mean, it, it, with a revised budget, you have to be more specific, right? Um, or you have to be overly broad, and it, I guess it depends on whether you're going to change the way you pay the funds out. It's the same. It's um, what do you think? Did you, did you like uh, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Uh, uh, seeing a budget, a revised budget, is a, a very, even though ours is very broad, it uh, gives you a better picture of what's going on within the entity. Well, Janine, what was your sense? Should we ask for either or, or should we ask for just one of them? Um, you know, honestly, as long as my understanding as long as the application and the budget reflect the same amount that we're looking for and the same information, it's easy on our end to insert one or the other and just make a copy of that. So it's really up to the committee if you guys have a preference. But on our end, we can easily do either or. Do you remember? Do you have a preference, Bobby? Yeah. No. No. I mean, the minutes reflect. Think? I have no idea. Okay. I can't even find the page we're on. So, yeah. oh. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> sitting here saying, okay, we, Chris, we did, you know we more about did a revised budget when we actually produced a budget, and right. the current application doesn't require a budget, so there was nothing to revise. Okay, I am. Um, this year, because 
we took that out of the. She's our treasure. She we took that out of the application. Me. So, the application makes sense to me. The difference is simply a percentage of the amount requested. You get a percentage of the amount you requested, but you're still going to do those things. Mm -hmm. Unless <coughs> we're going to say you're required to tell us what you're going to do, and you're going to, you know, and we're going to stick to that. So, if you're not going to stick to I think it makes more sense to leave it broad if you're not going to actually enforce here's what you said your budget was and here's what you spent. I yeah. think it potentially could open the city up. We generally do enforce that. No, you don't. Well, we don't? No. No. No, if they say they're going to spend $10,000 on advertising, we don't make sure that they spend 10000 because it's just a projected budget. That's all it is. And so you can't... I thought they were providing receipts of how they spend. They are, but, okay. it doesn't, it, yeah. but if I said I'm going to spend 10000 on advertising and 5000 on business cards, and I spent 2000 on business cards and $4,000 for flowers, Brandy's still going to pay those because it's all allowed. Right, it's all it's As all long as it's allowed under the RCW and there's some, it's vaguely connected to my application. Right, and it's not, if, if they said, hey, they're, they're going to do uh, printing and marketing and they're going to do um, flowers or whatever, and then all of a sudden they come back and they give me a $15,000 invoice because they want to do a video, that I don't think is going to pass okay. because that's not what they presented and sold to the committee that recommended the amount. So we do look at what they presented. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they, so, they absolutely look at the invoices, yeah. but they that's don't what, hold what I mean. you to the right. amount you said you were going to spend. Yeah. Oh, the amount or the item the that you... Either. Yeah. either. Right. So well, if it's do you within... Think that's the right way to do it? or? Um, I mean... That's the way it's been done. I think, I think you're going to have a lot I of people upset is, if I hold it accountable. I think it is <laughs> difficult when you're putting your application together to say, for instance, POPSA will say, we're going to do this event, this event, this event, and this event, and one of those events doesn't happen. Right. So does that mean that we can't then apply for those funds because we're not doing that event? We're doing something else. Right. What do you think? What are your thoughts as hotel peers? Um, as long as, you know, this... I don't think we should be able to kind of tell them how to do their business. You know, sometimes life happens, but as long as the spirit of the intending of the contract is fulfilled, then I'm fine. And that's what we check for. Yeah. We make sure that it is promoting Port Orchard, it's promoting the event that they, you know, it's promoting Port Orchard and it's creating tourists here. I mean, that's the point of the funds. I mean, um, and if it's within the same scope of what they presented on their application into the committee, then that's what I hold them to. But if it's so, and, and I haven't seen one come across, but if it's so not what was presented to the committee, then I give it to the treasurer, and the treasurer's going to make that decision whether they're going to reimburse them or not based on the documents and or legal counsel. Okay. I don't make that decision. So I have a question. So are any of the organizations writing off like percentages of cell phones or percentages yes. of phone bills? Yes. As operations? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think in the past we've also seen applications that included operations. Um, I can't. Uh, chamber does. Yeah, chamber the chamber does. does, and probably Visit Kitsap does. Visit Kitsap um, would. Um, Pops it doesn't. Pops it doesn't. Jesse, do you for yeah. balance? Yeah. yeah. With the float or anything? Saints yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Well, gasoline, things like that. Yeah. Well, okay. the, the, that's all. <coughs> I think it's just the chamber and the BCB because they're because they have it under their visiting business, so it's their um, um, part of their operation for promoting tourism. So like their mailing packets to tourism, they have a uh, <coughs> zip code or an address count of how many people you know yeah, ask for something. Yeah. So with the chamber of commerce, I know when people make make requests for packets and those were mailed out, that's considered obviously promoting the city and, you know, getting people on information here. And they have a percentage because they're South Kitsap area. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah. well, I've, and seen, I think in the, they I've seen in the past like phone. cell phones that really weren't being used for business and, you know. Well, I think the chamber takes some of their phone because, you know, they answer phone requests of some of their phone bill. Is my recollection. I don't know that I've there seen it. There was an agency recently. that did, or an organization that did, and, um, 
and there was a difference in an opinion between legal counsel and staff and legal counsel overrides staff and so it got reimbursed so it's been documented and that's just the way it went down and moving forward i mean as long as the attorney says it's okay and the finance department can support that decision they pay it so that's not my my decision to make but you know I, it, yeah i just i think part of it is just we have a limited amount of funds and mm -hmm. i know that the heart of most of the organizations is to bring in tourism here whether it's local or whatever brings business into the town and that's critical yeah. mm -hmm. so but i don't think and it was only one agency and or organization and i don't think they've gotten any funds in the last couple of years so and i haven't seen any come through um other than like i said the chamber and the vcb the vcb they don't do um but i just get a pnl from the vcb and we, they do a percentage of what they have um, allocated to port orchard and it makes sense to me and um, the treasurer's located, so that's how we reimburse them in such a small amount. I, I don't want to get into it now because I want us to move forward with this, but I would like at the very end because I have a couple questions about VCB because okay. I understand they're coming in and making a presentation. So before we leave, yeah, we okay, we'll add that Thanks. number nine or something. Okay, so as far as um, whether it's the exhibit as the application or a revised budget, I can make um, the change that says it's a lodging tax application and or a revised budget or a scope of services. What we were trying to do, I think, as well, is not create a secondary document that they're going to have to, um, once it's awarded, the contract's done, we send it back to the organization, they're going to have to update their documents, send it back to the city, and then now that's the file on record. So we were just trying to simplify the process. Hey, this is what they presented to the committee. Um, this is what they are saying that they're going to do with the, their, their funds. It's documented through the council, uh, the um, the committee itself as to what the committee recommended, what they recommended, the minutes from the council, what the council was supportive of, and then in through the final budget process. So it's all documented as to what agencies get and what. So, um, but and to me, if an agency feels more comfortable providing a budget and doesn't want to use that, that as long as it's a reasonable scope of services, I think we can take it contract by contract as long mm -hmm. as it's one of them too. Um, or if they want to create a third summary, but as long as it's consistent with the application, the committee's recommendation, and their awards, I'm okay. And you have that discretionary review. Absolutely. Okay. So it sounds like we're okay with expanding whatever Exhibit A is. Yeah. And this isn't a one-size-fits-all. I mean, it's supposed to be a, a, a guideline for most things that we can think of, but if there's an agency or two that their operation just doesn't work like the rest of them, um, then we can accommodate them. It makes sense. So if, if that if the committee is okay with that. Do any of you guys have issues with the contract that you want to bring up? For? I brought all my issues up last year. Okay. I really don't want to revisit it. I'll read it one more time, but I <laughs> think I'm done talking about the contract. Okay, Unless so you put some you put something unusual into it. It was not every intentional. Other, if it is, every so other please. word has been changed. I welcome all <laughs> feedback. I welcome all yeah, feedback. No, so. I I made like all my comments was, last year. Okay. Right? Okay. I think I captured them all, but okay. just if, yeah. But I'll triple check. Well, I, w I would prefer that we you know, address them before we, we put this out there. Okay. It sounds and like we have until little, January. We so have time to go over this, so. Yeah. And like I said, um, the intent is the exact same okay. thing that was passed um, by the council this year for next year. So there's no changes, no surprises, other than like I said, maybe I forgot to take it out from version eight. Whatever. Ninety-two. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. so it sounds like we're comfortable with the contract the with, <laughs> okay. with that one item change. And then so we'll still have the same exhibits, which is the the um, the state has not changed their reporting structure requirements um, information, so that's still all going to be the same. Um, the finance department has not changed their form for reimbursement. And then you guys will still have the ability to use the city's wayfinding logo packet. And I think we do have not only the PDF version, but I think we have some sort of TIFF JPEG usable Did format. You the JPEG okay, good. If you don't have it and need it, please let us know and we will get it to you somehow. It's too big to email, so we'll figure it out. Are you talking about Exhibit C? Uh, or is this, does that come later? It is. It's the way. It's this, okay. it's, it's, I don't know. Exhibit D is in David. Okay. Is that what you said? D, yeah. D is David. So, okay. I'm thinking that that stuff goes with the uh, 
contract. Yes. So okay. now, now we're looking at the application. Application. Again, same as last year. I didn't change anything but dates. Um, let's see. Uh, so I'm just checking. I did go back and update the insurance because it had the old insurance. This was just a FYI. This is the first proposal, blah, blah, blah. So this should be the exact insurance provision that's in the contract. Again, unless I missed something. But it wasn't intentional. So that's that. And assuming the committee still wants to put the re insurance requirements for people that um, apply, I I'm assuming you still wanted it the same. And then we have guidelines. You know, I just found the timeline at the very yeah, last. Yeah, I know. So Should I have that first? <clears throat> but so that's it's, just yeah. A summary. And we talked about the timeline, but if you mm -hmm. want to see it printed, it's the very last page. So let's take a few moments to look at this application. Last page. Okay. Um, this might be a good time to say that this is probably where we would want to let the applicants know what we're looking for. Um, and I'd like to share with you what I remember of direction from council. Brandon, you can help me with that. Um, basically, council would like to support Visit Kids App. They believe that they provide useful Regional services. marketing. Regional marketing. Now, that is basically what they have generally stated. No amount is discussed. So no, they would say, like, support should be X amount or whatever. So that's their general, you know, I'm just passing that on. That's their only wish, basically, or their only desire that I remember hearing. Um, there was a comment from the audience that was interesting, and that was Matt at the chamber. Uh, he wanted to stress that um, the 50 mile radius did not have to come into consideration, in his opinion. Um, he said he felt it wasn't supported by you know, the RCW, so I don't know, well, what else did he state, do you remember? That well, was that one. was the main thing. And he just wanted well, to stress. Well, I'm sorry, Fred, I was oh, multi That's okay, no. no. I'm just trying to relay what the comments, what I remember the comments from Matt at the chamber. He, he seemed to stress that he felt that the applicants didn't know what the committee was looking for and that it would be nice if the committee articulated what the committee was looking for. So maybe we can keep that in mind as we review the application here. Um, were you there at that meeting? I was not. There. Okay. I mean, it, it's 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 certainly a, a good suggestion. I don't know if it's meant to be a suggestion or a criticism, but um, we can try to incorporate. You, what was your sense? Well, of, I just felt he. I think he felt the fifty mile radius was. I mean, he just kept repeating that over fifty and over. miles. Fifty miles. Fifty miles. And his issue with that. And is, what was his? He, he felt there was a preponderance in the past that the, the priority was to fund ventures or marketing that were to places 50 miles outside of here. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Or he wanted visitors yeah. from outside the 50 mile radius. Right. And he felt there was too much emphasis and he felt that emphasis was incorrect. That the, I think he was saying the 50 mile radius doesn't exist anywhere. It's only in the recording, recording okay. requirements from okay. the state, but it's not listed it's not, in RCW. Yeah, it's yeah. not an actual That's requirement. What he said. Mm -hmm. So, it's not, uh, or it's not, it may be listed in RCW, but it's not a requirement to receive funds. Okay. As, so, you just have to as roll in, tourism. It's okay that we bring people into town that live within 10 miles. And oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. I thought he didn't elaborate on, but that. That's what he yeah. could, could be. I think a corollary of that might be that for, let's say for example, that your concern is that we just have more people to fill the beds that you have. More beds Whether beds. they come from Bremerton yeah. or right. Seattle. Yeah, or next door, or yes. Okay. You're indifferent as to the origin of your guests, is I guess what he's My suggesting. My guests almost all come from more than 50 miles away. So okay. Yeah, I mean. Okay. Yeah, so it's not, yeah. It's not an issue. But really. it's. The dots that are hard to connect is t to determine that that has any impact on actually via the events that occur here. I always look at it from the aspect that the city is doing what they can as businesses and as activities that bring people into town and that draws revenue into the city and that mm -hmm. makes a difference in our town and the businesses that are here. We don't, 
personal opinion, we don't have enough lodging facilities in the town. The best thing that we could have happen is to have additional lodging here that would now generate more revenue and somebody built a hotel. Oh, I think we have well, <laughs> yeah. I mean... No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you look on it as a competition, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Not too big of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, I, I think the idea is that if we were going to... I'm the smallest, I'm the yeah. smallest character yeah. in the party, so... <laughs> but I just see that there is a, a, a huge draw to come into this community and if we generate more rep, you know, more way to support our organizations that create an environment that is very positive for our guests that come, that is good. But, um. For example, ladies <coughs> night out. <coughs> you know, we're getting, we can't, uh, may I speak? You absolutely may. <laughs> but I feel that that emphasis, oh, we're always trying, we take our raffle tickets, we're always looking at the um, zip codes to make sure some of them are 50 miles out so that we, can go ahead and maybe use some of the LTAC money, maybe whatever, but it... And you're also working on the shoulder seasons where you have the potential for filling more beds that, and that's what we want to look at is how we can put together activities that bring people in on those shoulder seasons and fill beds and get more lodging tax. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Okay. Like high season is high season no matter what. And all of us in the lodging business would say, yeah, you do something to bring in in January, February, March, go for it. So for example, if you had a package <clears throat> where ladies would come and drink a lot and then they'd have to stay overnight, that would be a nice promotion that would... Yes, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you market that. I'm just. You know, uh, <laughs> it sounds as good as anything. Yeah. Yeah. There's the 50 miles, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it under the reporting? <coughs> under, it's under lodging tax tourism promotion 67.28.1816. 67. Um, it's on page 14 of 19 of your handout. The first handout. Okay. Of the uh, RCW. <sighs> And it's under 2A. Well, yeah, it's under the reporting. 2A2. So they have to report where it's coming from. He's saying that it's only coming from the report, not necessarily the requirement to spend the money. Is that what I recall? Is that what you recall him saying? I think so. Yeah. yeah. No, man. The, 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 yeah. The, he didn't seem to like it, is what yeah, I guess. Yeah, the perception was you have to market. <laughs> He's been told or under the impression that you have to market 50 miles away. We've been acting under that assumption for right. years. Right. I know. And he says it's, it's, he wants to get away from that because it's only required for the reporting purposes, not for the expenditure part. I think that's what he was. I don't know that I agree with this interpretation following this. I mean, I haven't studied this that closely. Um, it says applicants applying for the use of revenues in this chapter must provide the municipality to which they are applying estimates of how any money received will result in increases in the number of people traveling for business or pleasure on a trip away from their place of residence or business and staying overnight. So that's heads and beds to a place 50 miles or more one way from their place of residence or business for the day or staying overnight, or from another country or state outside of their place of residence or their business. Now that to me says, in order to get the revenue, I have to explain to you how I'm bringing people from 50 miles away. Okay. You have to provide it in a report. <laughs> but the, I feel like the question still... So the bubble in the room is how much of the tourism revenue that we bring into the city, a result of what the city does to draw those people in, even from 50 miles away. I mean, it's... It's a question, really, yeah, the question it's the, is, it's, are, you, are you allowed to pay for an ad in the Port Independent, which is clearly designed to bring local people to your event? 
but people in Detroit aren't reading the Porter Journal Independent. Exactly. Know that. Okay. Exactly. So, so, so the so question can you, can you get reimbursed for an ad in the Porter Journal Independent? Because you're you're clearly marketing a local event to local people, not to visitors. I mean, the, the visitor is the word. It's not defined is the problem. Well, it does say that. Let me see where it is. It does state that it has to be an. Uh, let me see. I gotta find out where it says because it does specifically say state about. Um. Tourism marketing, marketing and operations of a special event and festivals designed to attract tourists. So if you have an event that's not designed to attract tourists, then. Okay. And how do they define tourists? Yeah, what is a tourist? Tourism means economic activity resulting from tourists, which may include sales of overnight night lodging, meals, tourist gifts, or souvenirs. Yep. And then a tourism promotion. Nowhere does it say 50 miles. There is a promotion. Actually, and as I read this, you know, you're seeing in the context of number two and context of number two A, it does look like it's listing three items, and 50 miles is just one of those it's three. It's one of the three. Yeah, items. It's, yeah. So it's not certainly not the only criteria, but it is one of three. Um, but it is, I think maybe there has been an overemphasis that it had to only be over 50 miles. But if so you have an event, that you can no justify that um, it's designed to attract tourists. Right. Yeah. Then of and course, I think you don't but, care where they come from. Well, I, I think the it. fact that the matter is that very little of what occurs as in the city that we generate to draw people into the downtown area reaches anybody probably 50 miles away. We do it, like as saints, they probably come the closest because it's the hugest of the net. I think we have to overlay that the things that we do here are to draw people into the town and whether we're going to meet, reach somebody that's in Ellensburg, probably not. <laughs> you know, it's just, does this allow us to say we're doing the best with what we've got to draw people into this town and promote the city and the tourism that's here? I don't want us to, you know, fall on our face if it isn't 50 miles. How are we ever going to do we, that? Is, it, am it's I, hard am to capture the data. It didn't clear or unclear. We have all sorts of vendors that I will classify as tourists because they come over 50 miles and stay overnight. So the vendors are likewise named tourists in my book. Right. I mean, what do you see? I mean, the, the people that are coming in and staying in your lodging facility. As long as I have heads and beds, I don't really care. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Yeah. But that's one of them. One of them is you bring one. somebody it in from wherever and they're yeah. going to stay overnight. Yeah. That yeah. counts. Yes, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You're going to bring someone in on a day visit. How are you defining yeah. what makes that person a visitor as opposed to someone who lives here? Right. Say, I just or a relative of somebody who lives here, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, that is big. <laughs> it could be. It could be uh, their employer, right? Mm -hmm. Their boss coming over. That doesn't mean it's their tourist, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're coming over here to have lunch with them or stay in the night because they're gonna go golfing in Puyallup and then he doesn't want to. You know what I mean? We, I mean, you just don't know. It's just so vague. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's I have tourists. people come in all the time. I did today where the relatives were all there, about ten of them, right? yeah. and they were from Pennsylvania and they were visiting someone in Port Orchard. Now a there's whole, 50 miles, I can whole, say. A whole, and they a whole house full quite a bit. that came in for a 90th birthday party. And they're staying for grandma. right over here with you. So I guess maybe the key is, is that relatives come in all the time to visit people, and the key is to get engage those local. So this is kind of where it's the catch-22. You engage those local citizens that have relatives coming over to stay with them, to engage them to come down for their event while they're here. That's that's how you connect them and get them here. And, and how do you define and, get, and count that? I don't know. I don't think you can, actually. I mean, taste the Port Orchard. Lots of them coming in were 
from Bremerton. They were visiting. What do you call these? They're over from Bremerton. They shopped in my shop. A lot of them were out of town people. Texas. There were couples from I, Texas. I, I do wonder if, and I think it's, it's not a bad point that was brought up, that there may have been an overemphasis on the 50 mile radius, but I think it could have been perceived that there is, is one of the applicants is a regional marketer. And so maybe this was just sort of saying that that's not the only marketing that needs to happen. Um, and so I think that could have been... Regional. Yeah, maybe he felt that there was an over-emphasis on Visit Kits app. Mm -hmm. The chamber may have been trying to I the advertise there. in a little magazine, and uh, it's called Old Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good one. And I advertise Ladies Night Out, and it's way far away. I mean, but I don't think that way. I think someone in that little where they are from way down in Portland and other places, they might see it. Hmm. I don't charge this committee for my old stuff, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but it is a great magazine, and if I wanted to, I could certainly submit that kind of thing. Hmm. Okay, well, no. let's quickly review the application and see if there are any... Um... And I think for most of the organizations that submit for marketing for their events, I would say the majority of what they do is promoting the city, getting people out and down into the town and spending. So, um, I, think I, 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 I can't see... You know that there's. I don't see that we're doing anything wrong. I mean, I mean, I, that's yeah. just my my opinion. I mean, I just think that um, you have to be creative in how you get people here, and you know, you get them out from Manchester and downtown to see an event, and they've never been there before, and it's the twentieth year. You know, that's that's great, and I think we should count those numbers and get. But you know, and I think the. Um, it doesn't have to be from Manchester. I have people come in all the time that live right here in Fort mm -hmm. Orchard and say they've never been in my shop. So yeah. I say a mile from now if we could get them in here. I think good faith effort goes a long way and I think there just needs to be more conversations with you know whoever the, the lodging tax committee through the state um, you know to educate them on how difficult it is for, for local small municipalities to um, to account for tourists and what is a tourist and they don't have to you know be across to, you know out of the the state they could be like you said across the street next door and still never know what your store is about and generate that that revenue um, I know many people that go in and, and stay in a hotel you know in Bremerton or wherever it's a nice hotel not Bremerton but you know within their jurisdiction just to get away for the night or, or whatever not very many people but no, that should still count. Doesn't matter where they come from. Mm -hmm. I can see making a slight revision to the second page, um, section four, where we have the three bars of overall attendance. Um, the first one we have is, of course, the attendees who traveled 50 miles or more. I could see maybe changing the order of this. Well, so, oh, the order? Yeah. So the first order might be attendees who stayed overnight. Can we match the RCW? Is that? Is that yeah, sir, that's, that's the order. kind of what I'm wondering. <laughs> Let me see what the um, order is. Just change the order because. Didn't it match? I thought we did it to match her form. Oh, it could be. Yeah, whatever the form is, is what the reporting requirements are. Yeah, we did it to match okay. the form. So that's probably what it is. That's, that's the form that they submit. Overall attendance, attendees. And I think if we change it on the application and then they go okay. and submit the form to the state, they're going to end up transposing numbers. All right. Just well, suggesting we, because, yeah, I can see where that would came from. But it's funny that that form doesn't even follow the RCW. Um, but And that's the form set up by the Well, it committee. does follow the RCW because the RCW no, says you have the to RCW say... No, the RCW has 50 in the second place, and it has... I'm talking about... Oh, the okay, which which numbers? Numbers? Yeah, yeah, it's a very nit, the, yeah. The yeah. minor we, thing. But when we did it but, last year, yeah. we did it just to match the form. Yeah. No, that's the only concession I can see making uh, to de-emphasize the 50 mile radius. But it's it's there on the form, and uh, I don't know what. Yeah, and they well, have I guess it on the question is, is the 
stayed RC dip or whatever. I mean, on the 50 mile radius, how imposing on that are they? For the reporting requirements, it's all honesty by the organization that submits the report. So if, it, if an organization put two in there instead of 200, mm -hmm. There's no requirement. There's yeah. no. There's yeah. nothing that says that you have to have more than X number in order That's to meet a quote, yeah. quote. Yeah, I guess I just, sort of the thought that went through my head is the concern that I'm the organization and having to put this packet together, fathoms whomever, you know, taste of Port Orchard, I think we all pretty much look and see that the majority are pretty local. But we brought people into town and we generated revenue and whatever. I, I think it's... The underlying purpose and not. I think it makes I, I hate, you I just, think I about guess I hate how to see an organization writing 150 in there or 50. Well, when maybe some do. Some do. But, but I think what it does is make you think how you're tracking people. So, what are you doing yeah. so that when you put a number there, you can support it? Well, and I agree with that philosophy and the aspect that is what we're doing. Is there something else we could be doing that generates more people coming from farther away? No. There absolutely is, yeah. and we're not doing it. Yeah. So. so we're doing it a little bit. We're trying. <laughs> we're working I'm on it. I'm trying very hard. <coughs> well, baby steps. But hey, we had people come to the Taste of Port Richard, specifically come to the Taste of Port Richard from Auburn this year. Ooh. Oh. And they heard about it on Facebook. Wow. We had so we've been doing more promotion on Facebook, which media. boosts it yeah. out more. We had Pokemon, two ladies come from Port. The Pokemon brought people from all over. We had two ladies yeah, come from, codes. from <laughs> Port Townsend checking out the taste. Yep. And they're having a big uh, event, and they wanted to see how ours was run. I well, I always tell people I get extra points if they're from far away. So I make sure that they write in. Also, you ask the birds that go like, oh, that's right. born. Yeah, well, you know, well, when, when they're at the gallery and say, well, should we sign in? And they and we'll say, yes, where are you from? And they'll, they'll say, oh, I'm from Pennsylvania. And I say, oh, that's great. I get, no, I get it for points for you. And if they said from Pugel, it's like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> say, Thank you for um, the only thing that was really missing last year, and we didn't really ask for it when we were doing the reviews, and we specifically took it out of the application was the was the agency budget total budget oh what the total budget was so what we asked for was how much are you requesting and describe the describe the amount and then and do a total project amount so this was for marketing, and the numbers tended to be the same because you were going to do marketing, you were going to do it for LTAC, you were asking for $15,000, and the total amount that you were projecting was $15,000. And that didn't really give you a lot of information about what. So are what they only going to yeah. otherwise? Right. So like are the, they only going to market what LTAC gives them? Yeah. Or are they going to go above and beyond? Is that a point? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm. How would what are they totally allotted for that, and what percentage of it is mm -hmm. coming from LTAC mm -hmm. and, and, and versus what they bring out of the pri their private budget? And some jurisdictions ask for P and L for that reason, right? And we used to we and mm -hmm. we we deliberately didn't last year, but I think that in going over the review <coughs> last year, it made a, a difference in terms of how much you knew about the organization and what they were doing in general. Well, it says, well, and it says, please attach the most recent annual financial statement of the organization, and we can change or add to that financial statement and or, I mean, I don't know if that's the same thing as a P&L or not, but, I don't well, know, profit and loss, but I mean, I don't know what the difference between a profit and loss and a financial statement is. Is it different? Saying that you have to do it for your organization no matter what anyway, so, right? Yeah. Well, Chris, going back to your point, it's sort of hinted at under three project information A, where we have the two columns, the amount requested and total project amount. Um, but, okay. 
But what I'm wondering is, what if we had those cells for all marketing event and opera? You know, is is that part confusing? The types of funding up here, is that not being addressed by this? You know, if we had this three times, like, would that help any? Um, I think we didn't. We we did. So you're saying a portion of the money is going for the operation of the organization. Or, yeah, well, it's for the for event, for marketing yeah. and one And I'm going to double check to make sure, because I know last year there was, a, I think, a type of Well, that. I would rather see it going for marketing and events than because most organizations should, their operation budget should be. Well, when, when I'm thinking out loud once again is like, what if we had this amount requested in total? What if we had it three times? One would be for marketing, event, and operation. Just, oh, because you know, what yeah. we did was we said, please complete this section for each type. So you did one for marketing, and then you right. did it again for events. And I'm wondering if that's form. awkward if we're asking them to provide additional pages that aren't in the form. It's like, you know, copy this three times. What if we just had three lines and say, yes. attach additional information <laughs> at the end? But at least let them know that we want you know, A1, A2, A3. Because you have to report it separately. So you would also have to do item, uh, because well, we, were trying to make it, we were trying to make their annual report easier. Is that how we did? Let me think here. Because oh. number four, because the way that they, they changed the way that they did the annual report. And so when you do the annual report, you have to choose right, when you do what, you, what you spent the money here, on. In here, you have to pick whether it's marketing, event, or operation. Yeah. This yeah, so it should be here. marketing and then... Um, so it sounds like we're we're basing our entire app, and I'm not saying it's bad, but we're basing this application on this reporting form. Well, we were trying to make this reporting form easier yeah. because it was the it reporting was so form was really awful though mm -hmm. to understand. I mean, this this doesn't I don't know this doesn't seem it, it doesn't make any sense, and it's hard to fill out. But this is what the state requires. Yeah. So we were trying to make it. We were, we were trying, trying to, to make match, have this easier. match this. Yeah. yeah. I, I can see that, but. You know, the attendee estimates is fine. The activity name, were they supposed to do this three times? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that because it's online? It's, on, yes. it's online. As opposed to paper? Well, it's an Excel spreadsheet, isn't it? It is a, I created an Excel spreadsheet that mirrored the database that I have to manually put that in through the state. Oh. So I have to enter it into the state's database system. And so what I did is I took the exact, what that looks on the screen, is I created an Excel spreadsheet that looked exactly the way I input it on the screen. What we ended up doing though last year, and I don't think it was our intent when we did the form, was we ended up allocating specifically for event and specifically for marketing. Instead right. of one amount, right. we allocated two amount or three amounts. Yeah. So we were allocated $4,500 for an event and $6,000 for marketing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that was our intent when we started the form. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it should necessary. say, so the type of funding, I don't, think it is. I don't, I think it's I don't know if this is going to make it clear, but this is what the, the reporting and the RCW, so it's tourism marketing. And then the other option that you can spend it on is marketing and operations of an event designed to attract tourists. And then the operation one doesn't apply because it's not a um, operations and capital expenditures for tourism related facility owned and operated by a municipality. We don't own that. So I think I'm gonna, I think we need to take out operation and it's going to be two. It's going to be tourism marketing. Or event you, marketing. Hmm? Or event marketing. Or it'll be marketing and operation. You're allowed to have marketing and operation of a special event. Of a special event. No. Not Designed to attract tourists. Yeah. Right. So I could do so it'll just be two categories. I don't know if that is going to clear it up. I don't know if that's going to confuse well, things. Well, I think going I from... I don't know what's the difference between tourism, marketing, and marketing for an, 
Well, tourism marketing is high. Come to the city of Port Orchard because we have great, cool things here. And, and it's not and tailored to the ladies' night It's not tailored to ladies' night <laughs> So does it make sense just to keep it as a vent and we know what that means? I guess the question, because we were trying to make this easier, but maybe <laughs> we don't need to. Maybe we just need to not, maybe we just need to say, how much do you want from the city? What's your total budget for the year for any t sort of marketing event, blah, blah, blah. How much of that do you want from the city for LTAC purposes? And now describe what you're going to do. Yeah. That way they do one application. That way we had some that had thing. six applications because they were separating so marketing versus operations. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you take out the type of funding altogether. So take out the type of funding and take out that first sentence. So quantifying that we, um, because it's tourism or tourism based, okay, mm -hmm. that we're not providing funding to an organization. And I'll just use Chamber of Commerce as an example. To pay the executive director. Correct. Yeah, that it is actually going that money stream is is going for an activity or a participation or something that draws people into the town, not the supporting necessarily of the it's marketing efforts, yeah. Correct. But mm -hmm. marketing is very broad and so um, it could mean a portion of um, internet. I don't know that that or Facebook or website maybe oh, not the internet. I didn't mean internet. Yeah. Face uh, website. A lot of people use website because that's a marketing tool. You can use a percentage of that or all if you're. I think I don't think anybody does all. But, um, okay, I'm also making it simpler. So cross out type so, of funding yeah, and the first sentence. Nobody's using executive directors for their. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's it's tourism, and I and 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 I look at that, you know, it's, um, myself and and finance department look at that, and make sure. Um, Have you ever had a situation where you've had to say mm, no? That yeah. doesn't okay. Yeah, I just, I just every year because I think <laughs> well, I mean, okay. <laughs> Have not, ask not, whatever. But. You should have a conversation because it's they don't usually put press releases out on that. <laughs> Although that would be funny. It's like fifty thousand disqualified in the twenty sixteen lottery. I think you need to put in the guidelines that you're not going to pay for something that you have. They haven't paid tax on. Yes. Because that is hmm. so disturbing every single time. Yeah. Now what is that? The treasurer won't pay if you if I buy something at this new print, and I'm not I don't pay sales tax on it because it's from out of the state. The treasurer won't reimburse that because I didn't pay the sales tax. So what they want me to do is to file a report with the state and say, "Here's my check for three dollars and twenty two cents for the sales, sales tax, tax would have been on what the sales tax would have been if I had bought it in state, locally. so that I can turn around and." Put in the reimbursement for the thing I bought plus the sales tax I paid to the state. Because the city has to pay any anything that the city purchase purchases, and we do not pay sales tax at the time of purchase. We have to fill out quarterly, monthly, yearly, I don't know, excise tax statements, and we have to pay the tax on that. And I so it's submitted. So that's what the treasurer's comment is, is that we're not going to reimburse something and then we get an audit that says, why didn't you pay tax on it through the excise tax? Would that paid. be in the contract as opposed to the application? I'm going to put it in the guidelines. It um, should guidelines. be in the guidelines. It's vaguely in the L contract uh, as the, you, the, you have to pay all your you taxes. The, uh, the yeah. okay. But I think it's important to make that really clear for people so that you don't expect to get reimbursed for things that you and so you spend the money. And I'll put a, a couple of examples state. because there's late okay. fees. Sometimes um, there's late fees on there and we don't yeah. reimburse for late fees. Um, mm. um, oh boy. I think those are the only two things that I can think of offhand, um, but I will check with AP because she's pretty good. It has a it's checklist. almost like you could say we don't reimburse for any out of state expenses. If it, if it would have, if it would not have required sales tax in Washington, they'll still reimburse for it. If it mm. was, if you bought something that wouldn't or require 
sales tax in Washington. Right. It's okay. You're right. It's okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, weird one, video production. You're not required to pay sales tax on oh. video production. There's sales tax on food. Isn't that weird? Oh, that's weird. Huh. There's sales, you mean like a, a restaurant? Or, I mean, where are you buying food you don't pay sales tax? Like a candy bar? Do you pay? Oh, okay. So, I don't know that you would ever reimburse for a candy yeah. bar, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess if you handed one out to every lady coming to well, the ladies' night. Well, I'll have a bleachy and maybe a chocolate. <laughs> For the for the art walk, and we handed out all that candy kind of thing and bought for Oriental Trade or Halloween or something like that. Oriental Trade. Is that Oriental Trader. Yeah. Yeah. You there's probably no tax there, state. Though, though, because you're ordering it out of state. Yeah, because you, <laughs> you can buy 852 pieces of it for $2.52 instead of $800. <laughs> so you save. So you pay. You pay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they use real sugar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so I will make that change on the guidelines to add some uh, things that are not reimbursable. Okay, and then I will take out this part up here that doesn't make sense. And that first and the line first sentence. Or so of the description. Please complete the section of each type of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I'll take that and out. And if there are specific things you Actually, need to Actually, the second to sentence, too, you need to take out. Check the appropriate they, box when above. When you get a receipt that you keep kicking back, like, we must have a copy of your check, okay. along with your invoice, because if, okay. however you want to do it, so that, so that you're not, so that people know what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. I mean, That's I'm, not I'm pretty That's clear at this okay. point, but. No, thanks, yeah. Actually, you'll need to rewrite three completely, not, yeah. not oh. just cross that out, because the second sentence doesn't make sense either, but you can figure that out later. Please provide a brief description of the proposed 2016 yeah. project. I mean, when we say that's check the appropriate box, that's not yeah. applicable either, so yeah. you can figure it out later. I will make sure <clears throat> yeah, that is correct. revision. Okay. How much detail oh. do you want so does are you the committee want to see for in terms of B? the description? How about whatever can fit on this page? Yeah, because we did put up here, do not include presented presentation materials, and these will be more appropriate used for the oral presentation. I can tell you that a couple of them did never read that and still provide us oodles and boodles of it. Um, and then the other thing is, so do you still want to leave that in there? And then do we still want the financial statement? You want to make an organization, or do we want to put and or PL? Where she said, please. Okay, know. that's two questions. So the oh, first page. Yeah. I, I think financial statement or latest P and L would be okay. How about budget? Or budget. Budget or P and L. It's not the same. For P and L and budget are not the same. Well, what do you guys want? Do you want? I'd rather have a budget than a P and L. Budget, not P and L, or latest budget. So annual financial statement and. Or P and L. Or budget. It really looks. Really strange from one organization to the next. Oh, yeah, and do we care about profit and loss? Okay. No. Scratch PL, so. No, but we, there wasn't there a conversation <clears throat> about wanting something of, or maybe this answers the question about what the total project was, that they're not just asking and, and being supported fully on lodging tax funds. Mm -hmm. Is that what the um, question was? So I don't know how you would. So what type of documentation you could provide the committee for support of that? I don't know. Or the application for support of that. So I guess we're talking about a little bit of oversight on how funds are being sent by, mm -hmm. spent by the organizations. Well, number five. It, it is, we actually can see that they're not coming in and asking for funds when they didn't balance, they didn't manage their budget appropriately. Do we have that the, problem? Do we have that problem? I mean, um, overall, I mean, mm. when we gave uh, the Saints 13000 whatever, $342, how did, what did they give you to show you what they spent that Receipts. On? They have oh, receipts. Yeah. So there's a receipt, and um, I don't know if it was a P&L or if it was a budget. 
It was a. Um, it, it, I don't it was know. Was there a budget for the event and what they do? What the Saints do is and they have two they, lines: the projected and they, the actual. They do the projected, and then what they ask for is the difference between what they're projecting and what they got like last year. So, so it's usually that about two thousand. That would be sufficient. Yes. I See, believe. that's the way I would think. Right. Yeah, and then we I mean, have some. And then we have another organization that like does that. not um, provide. Um, documentation that supports the cost of their actual advertisement. Um, they don't provide actual statements of their um, copy machine or their mailing expenses, whatever it may be. So um, what I require is a P&L. And I wanna see what revenues they received in, what expenditures they paid out, and then they have to tell me what percentage they believe that they spent on marketing for the city of Port Orchard alone. Mm -hmm. And so of the amount um, that they received in revenue versus expenditures in uh, City of Port Orchard, I think the percentage was 3%. And I'm like, that makes sense to me based on the, who the organization is. And they have such a small amount anyways based on their whole um, funding. So that's sufficient. And you would let us know if you saw something out of order. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So... <clears throat> I guess it's decided however you're going to change the first page. <laughs> <laughs> Financial statement for XXX or, or maybe no change. What, you know, I didn't hear a single consensus here, but I'm, I'm not against to however you want to change that. Um, to make I, it more I can keep an annual financial yeah. statement and we're going to get the same thing we got last year. So okay. I think some people provided a P&L, some okay. did a, a, okay. a detailed budget with, okay. um, and I think what they did is they did the, the prior year's budget with the actual, I think that's what the crews provided. Um, I think it depends on the organization. Yeah, and I can't remember what anybody yeah. else did. I just know okay. specifically. So maybe not as change, long as it makes sense. Yeah. Do we have a concern? That, that needs to be, I mean, that there's something specific. It's more a question of how much detail do you want to see about an organization, what the organization is doing overall and what they're using LTAC money for in that plan? Or do you just want to say, I know last year we decided that really we didn't care, that all we really wanted to see was this is how much money I want and here's what I'm going to spend it on because we didn't really care that an event might cost $45,000, but I'm only asking for five. You, you, we just wanted to know that you wanted $5,000 and you were gonna spend it on this event. But I don't know that that gives you enough information. I'm just asking, right. I don't because know that it gives like you enough Randy's information. It sounds like Randy's pretty much on top of it. Yeah, I mean, I think well, the answer is a part but, but I look at the part, I mean, the oh, example mean always gets in my head. Oh, I yeah. see. Is, the Saints Car Club because what was that? The Saints. I mean, you know, they bring in probably one of the biggest attendants. And they events, ask very little. And they ask for, you know, fourteen hundred and twenty two dollars. Thirteen. You know, but is it vital for your decision for when you make that award knowing that they've already put that money into it and they're only asking for the difference? Is that what makes the committee decide the amount that they give them versus No, it's the not, looking okay. at the organization and how they have set up their procedures and their funding and how they've raised the money. When I would look at another organization maybe and say, okay, you're maybe only bringing 4,000 people into the town in variance to, for example, because you put them side by side, the saints, but you're asking for this much more and the revenue dollars that we have to give out are very limited, so you want to see that actually moving in a way that puts heads in beds mm -hmm. and in a way that draws the tourism into the town so that all the businesses benefit. The that only thing sense? is the saints are a little different. They're in different. The, <laughs> they're, they're so they're big they're and unique, they have a actually. great deal of money and they have a great many working at it, where some organizations are very small. Mm -hmm. I know about that, yeah. and we don't have that money, and it's it's a totally different look yeah. on paper. Yeah. Well, That's and it's just a, I, for yeah. lack of a hit. There are certain organizations that exist, and they're not. When I look at them, technically designed to be bringing a lot of out of area people into the area. They're a local entity that exists in probably every city and every town. You know. 
And I think we want to see our lodging tax dollars go so that it is generating greater revenue into the downtown core and into the businesses. And then balancing that because we don't want to do the events of parades and Fourth of July and you know that make small town small town. So clear as mud. It is a conundrum. <laughs> so so just leave it be. I think leave it be. Leave it yeah. be. Leave page one. I can do that. Uh, okay, I'll modify section three. I'll update the guidelines. Did we want to add anything else to project description or? To limit them like 150 words or less, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle. Could we just do four words? Yeah. <laughs> 140 characters. Bullet points, please. Three bullet bullet marks only. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> bullet list. Well, or maybe but you're looking at. I mean, you're not looking at one event. You're for most of the organizations submitting. You're looking at an, an annual project. Mm -hmm. Proposal for marketing. So you're looking. At, so don't you want? Do you want? Well, that's the question. Do you not want to know with any specificity what an organization is going to do with that money? Or do you just want them to say, I'm going to do marketing, I'm going to do some events, um, I'm going to spend the money wisely? I mean, is that all you want to hear? Or do you want to know they're doing the 4th of July, they're doing a parade, they're doing concerts by the bay, they're doing the East Side Out, they're doing... Well, Brandy, aren't you on top of that? I mean... No, no. I mean, I think we have to do, yeah. I mean, it's due diligence to, no matter what, after you should the be willing. I'm all after about yeah, You should be willing to do like what you're using it for. I, it sounds like if there was Actually. some fraud or something bad or what, you'd be on top of it. But, the, Bobby, the question is not what Brandy knows yeah. after the fact, but what do you need to know to say, right. yes, we're going to give you money. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. For example, Flowers for this town. Flowers for the town. That's Very a really good example. Little thing. Well, that's Lights what's for on, the town. What's on this page? Um, maybe we can bold the word brief where it says pro please provide a brief description of the activity. The first page does say that, you know, it's not presentation materials. I think it's nice if we get a concise statement here. Um, just like, okay, this is what you want. I'm not expecting the detail here on page two. Where are you expecting it? Um, that's what kind, of, what kind of detail do you guys want and where do you want it? I don't just want it here. I would um, expect to put our list of activities for the year, 14 separate events, and have that list so you know what, what's, what's happening. And the budget coordinates with those 14 events, you know, uh, total amount, uh, the, and that's where we show the um, money that we're requesting for uh, ELTA on the line, on those lines, which will be several of the lines, concerts, um, um, parade. Uh, the, um, okay, so if you had bullet points like 14 events, 20 mm -hmm. concerts, and, you know, three parades, I think that would be very helpful here. Mm -hmm. um, on the other spectrum, it's like, you know, when we get like 50,000 pages from the VCB of the websites they've done, that's overwhelming. So, so I think we want them to provide us concise information. They can provide supplementary information, but it is nice if they bullet point it out here. How like about it? So, so the so the sun, yeah, even if they want to call with VCB. So they have it's different style, but asking the same information above. And they've got the qualifying project, which is how we did, but we're going to go with that because I think we learned our lesson. So, anyways, so they have under project, they have it listed as project uh, questionnaire. Um, and what they have, I'm trying to figure out, so we have project information, they have project questionnaire. They say describe your project. And then they say describe with specifically what aspects of your project would you spend the requested funds on and then they have a section called promotion so it's just like this so and then they say promotion describe how you will promote your project to attract tourists describe how you will promote lodging estab establishments restaurants and businesses located in anacortes and then they have a budget section describe your overall budget for your project what percentage of the budget are you requesting from the city? 
And then what would you cut from your proposed budget if your application is not fully funded? Oh. And who said what? Wow. Anna Cordes. Anna Cordes. I, I mean, I do like the part, I'm sure that caught you, that, you know, how do you, basically, how do you support lodging within the city, whatever it was. How are you going to promote? But, yeah, how are you Hotel. promoting the lodging? Describe how you will promote lodging establishments, restaurants, and businesses located in the those city. Those are bad region. questions. Yeah. I'd rather have those here than Yeah, yeah. lodging. And it just says enter text here, and we can set it up this format here. So you're going to have, instead of three pages, it's going to be four pages this mm -hmm. year. But you would just include, you know, this section will have a, you know, this section here, unless you just want to have it this style where it just says, you know, promote, and then we're going to have a big block. I guess it's the same thing. Well, it could be brief then. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, mean you're, you're not write an there, essay. You just have to write and then you how it applies to that. And then if you have questions, then that's when you good. ask them when they're here. But at least they'll give you at least a couple sentences as to what they're, or paragraphs, depending on which section it is. So are you okay with all, some, none, leave a B? I like all of those because I think it's one way to pull out information that is relevant. Right. Um, maybe if we do say like provide a brief description, that's just too vague to people. Mm -hmm. They don't know. Well, right. But Some if we break it down, pull, like how do you do this, this, yeah. this, and this, this, and then they have an answer? Yeah. That might be a way to get the information. We, if they we seem more relevant. Provide a one sentence answer. Yeah. yeah. And they don't. They have. Let me see. And they still have project name, dates of project, amount of funding requested. You know, at the top part, and then down here, you're just describing your project. Um, and then describe specifically what aspects of your project would you spend the requested funds on. So, so they do that for every event? No. No, overall. Yeah. Overall. Okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah. And well, so what do you guys think? It would give people a guideline and a good one. And, and they would could that, make it brief. Mm -hmm. And would that be helpful for the committee to, to be, decipher through the applications yeah. why they are... Yeah. Worthy. It, worthy would, the right it word. would let you know that they had at least thought about how the promotion is going to impact. It will make them think That's about very how the promotion is. And I think it, it's telling them what we want to know as opposed to them providing stuff that we may not want to know. It's yeah. like, this is what we want to know. Mm -hmm. Here are five questions. Can you answer them? Mm -hmm. um, well, if it goes do, back do you think events. it would be more difficult yeah. to fill out or more easier? Think about that. Yeah. I think it will take a little more thought, but I think okay. it's worthwhile to do. Okay. Yeah, for us as a committee, I think it'd be easier to, to compare apples to apples. I think it would just make it easier for us. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And then I'll just throw these three too under the because um, they also have the reporting section, like similar to what we do. But they also ask three additional questions. They say, describe methods you will use to track tourists for the purpose of mandatory reporting. And then describe your prior success of your project in attracting tourists. And then describe your target tourist audience, location, demographics, etc. Not sure if you want all that detail, but just wanted to throw it out there. And then they do say attachments. Prior recipients for similar proposal must attach examples of ads, promotional materials, reports, or other materials they have generated with all prior allocations of lodging tax funds. And then list the titles of any attachments you have included with this application. So that's what Anna Cordes required. Uh, this is the 2017 application that they're requiring. And they have it interesting and you know, it's getting What's late, but they have it letter? reoccurring <laughs> events. Yeah. It has one process, and then first time and one time project has a different process. I, I think that's a report to, to keep maybe as an example of where we might want to keep going moving. someday. Going. Yeah, 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 because I think that's very comprehensive <laughs> and certainly. Could be used as a impetus to look at what we're doing, you know, our more clearly in that are we accomplishing something? Their budget is two hundred forty-six. Three times of what ours was. Yeah, we so don't we, want it to be so too like complicated. This, yeah, we like this thoughts. project for question air in place of number three, our project information. Is that what right. I understand? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How many, hmm? how many questions are there on the end of one? Uh, two, four, seven. Seven, seven that, questions. Is that in here in our yeah. No, no I oh, forgot okay. to send it. I just had it here because I didn't know how it was going to go, but I will email it to you guys. 
you guys can take a peek at it. And then I did uh, state that this Friday the 9th is when we could go. So if you guys get home and can't sleep and you're burning to have something changed, just send me an email. Or if we want to wait until Monday, give you guys some time to think about what additions you want. Um, we can do that too, or you can just move forward, whatever. So you'll be able to send us the revise and give us a deadline? Yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd like yeah, to I'll, I'll give you a revise tomorrow. I'd like to see okay. the council okay. see that too. That the Anacortis? Yeah, that maybe fold that in there somehow. Just, just throw it on the table. That maybe this is something we looked at and see as a guideline for oh. maybe where we kind of want to move. I, I think it's very, you know, it's pretty clear. But yeah. hmm. it could be an FYI. I don't think they're. Yes, gonna, thank they're you. They're not going to really. Um, maybe, yeah, you could email like this is the new application yeah. or something. Um, were there any changes, additional changes to the guidelines or the insurance? So are you guys okay? I'll send you guys a revised application tomorrow for you guys to look at. So it is today, Wednesday, so tomorrow's Thursday. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a quick turnaround if you want me to open it up and send it out on Friday. Um, or do we just want to open it up on Monday? And you guys can get back to me by Monday morning and we'll open it up Monday afternoon. It's not going to get in the paper. Yeah, it's not going to get in the paper until... No. Tuesday is our deadline to get it into the following Friday. So I think Tuesday at noon or 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. 10 so we have until Monday to, to do anything that we want to do with it. So uh, Monday would probably work for me since I'm out Friday. Let's, but, let's uh, say well, Monday. Let's say Monday. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I will do whatever the committee wants. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out my man. It's out your business. Man. Whatever, I'm going to be bi yeah. business wise. Whatever your so. schedule works. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I can do it. And we'll definitely watch. remind us what the deadline okay. is. Okay. So I'll send you a rise tomorrow. Okay. I'll let you know when I'd like to have the comments back, if that makes sense. Okay. And then let me know if you guys have any changes. I'll share it with the committee. Um, So insurance, I don't think there are any changes on the insurance. But I will also tell you, and I will send it to you as well, is that City of Anacortes also has a um, four-year, six-year, eight-year, 15-year, I don't know, um, per, uh, per, tourism promotion strategic plan. So it would be nice for the city to have something like It really would be I nice to get a couple weeks some ago. Okay. direction okay. from... Yeah. The council as to what they'd like to see. It really would. I mean, it would be really helpful for planning well, purposes. They, if they were being, asked. And Beck, I think, because yeah. she'd asked that question, and then I went and did some research, and I gave her two different plans, and I think that's what she was trying to get from the council. But um, maybe some of them are just visual. I'm, or I'm, well, I think. But so yeah. I think that's what they were trying to yeah. get. But. You can't put something together like this yeah. in, in a night, which is no. It's it'll be next year, be, right? Before they get it done. So it's really been given to the Economic Development Tourism Committee Chair, yeah. and so I'm assuming she will uh, make something happen. Hopefully by because November. otherwise we just keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Correct. What is the council's we're vision in tourism? Do they want festivals and events, or do they want whatever it is? I don't know. What I think the problem is they were asked what do they want, as opposed to hear what other people are doing. Which do you like mm -hmm. better? Because when you ask, like, what do you want, it's like there was not a lot of input. Right. Um, I think it's easier to lay a success story in front of yeah. them and say, like, we want I something think like that. I think Anne Fortas has done a fabulous or job. Give them a multiple um, choice why, list. I'll which email ones that to you, you like guys better. if you're interested. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would, I mean, that really would be. I think there was another. I think they just already done it right. right yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's. A, it's a beautiful document. Who's this one? That's good because there's no reason to reinvent the wheel if it's already oh, out there. I, this is. I have no idea where it's at. I think it's Australia or somewhere. But the tourism strategy for the Redlands. I mean, they have a four-year plan as well, and it just. I mean, it's beautiful how they attract tourism to the island, but. They are. Australia. I don't know where Redland is. that where it is? Australia? Is that what you said? Redland? I, I don't know oh, where Redlands is. Yeah. Don't know. If it's Aust Australia. Is it near next to Redmond? You know what? That's, that's <laughs> where Redland's California. Is that's, Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> that's a really good one. I've got it someplace. I'll send it to you. But I'll, I'll send uh, the Anacortes one to you for sure. Um, if you guys want this you know, one, that's a good project. You. you know, if you have time, maybe Google a, a place that you you like what they're doing, mm -hmm. and we can share it with the group and think of this is what we'd like to do. I would probably for, look for a city either nearby or a same yeah. size, for example. That's what I was like, right? I'd like what Port Townsend has done, um, but I don't know how much of that they've written. I just love Port Townsend, so. 
economically that city isn't doing right. They're not very substantially economic. I, I like visiting there. I can't yeah. imagine living there year round. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're tired, oh. but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they're a nice destination. Okay, so when does the committee want to meet um, after we receive applications? I'm assuming, and if so, then we can work with at the you guys. Janine will coordinate your guys' schedule. Guys schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you guys, <laughs> is the applications due? So, our, I think um, hopefully, is everybody comfortable with October third? I think page. it's that first yeah. Monday in October. I won't be here. <laughs> Well, that's, that's when the applications, applications are due. Oh, okay. okay. And then that following week, I think October, let me see. October 10th? Yeah, could that you, week sometime. Could you not make it on the 7th ladies' night out? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just trying to get out of it. So, okay, uh, applications on the 3rd. Due. That's when they're due, so we'll have them copied and ready for you guys to pick up. Um, um, first thing on the 4th, so you'll have that week to pick them up. And then you guys can meet the following week with the, um, we'll schedule some dates for the presenters to come in the week of the 10th to, to City Council, October 10th, the, the week of. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to wait till the next week to discuss it though. If we've okay. done the interviews. I, last year you guys did a, um, I don't remember. Can we come in the next? Like, I think it was the next day or the, the day next after. Day, yeah, like, you guys did it all Friday. the same week. I mean, it was boom, boom, boom. So and I think you guys, we can do that. If you guys can, it would be beautiful if you can get a recommendation. That's what we, yeah, you guys did do it because um, I needed it Friday morning to put it as part of the packet for the council. Recommendation by, what's your date? October 13th. If you guys want to meet October 13th for deliberation and then the 11th and 12th would be for, actually it would be 10th and 12th. So we got a council meeting on the 11th. The 10th is Columbus Day. Oh, that's a holiday. I won't be here. Well, I could. But... You're never here. <laughs> I could if that would be the only date for the committee. Oh, well, I don't know if the present the presenters are going to have to come in that day, though. Interviews. <clears throat> Let's not. Okay, so when are we going to start? Let's yeah. say the interviews. Sorry, the went over interviews fast. tentatively October 12th. Is that Wednesday? Yeah. Yes. Tentatively, 10, 12 interviews. But we have to have a recommendation by the 13th. And then the, we'll meet again the next night to discuss. You're going to do all of them the same night? No, 10, 12, and 10, 13. Oh, you mean all the interviews? Sorry. Yeah. Yep. So we're meeting oh. start, So we're meeting October 10th. So you're going to take the 12th off? Because <coughs> we're going to need to start sooner than well, 7 o'clock. We, we will need to find out how many there are, and we'll give yeah. them 15 minutes. And I will yeah. third. Yeah. And That's we'll know by the how many there are. Each. Pardon? That's important to know how many. Yeah. yeah last, uh, so so our next long. meeting is So let's say there's 12. Minutes. We give them each 15 minutes. We do three an hour. That's, what, four hours? <laughs> yeah. But that's Will all on the 12. you be calling in sick um, that day or? 12. And some may not. Yeah, I don't know. We, we really don't have a lot of time to do that this year. Um, or we or can do you guys need a full week to review so we close on the third do you want presentations the sixth and seventh and then you guys can deliberate on the 12th or 13th now ladies day is totally is a hard week okay for all that week the whole week okay. well no just we could especially have the day on the 12th before. or 13th oh, yeah, with applications true. and then have then stay on the 13th so let's say we do two hours on the 12th one hour of interviews on the 13th and then one hour of discussion. And it's in the 14th, you guys can hold it on the 14th and I can make it available to the public on, or to the council on the 17th when it comes in. So if you guys want to meet on the 14th or even on the 17th, I'm just going to have a generic staff report that says the committee's deliberating and we'll provide it at the night of the meeting. <laughs> Might not like it, but... Well, yeah, they don't need to get it before the meeting on the 18th. So, they, yeah, they don't need it by the 14th, but... Um, I know some will so want it. So let's tentatively book the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 17th. We're, we'll only need two of those nights, but this we'll... This is October. October. Okay, October 12th, 13th, 14th, <laughs> and 17th. <laughs> tentatively. Um, Which, okay. And then, and then and so nobody can go out on the town. 12th. One night we're on the 13th. Or possibly two on the 12th and the 13th. Um, and this is for them to present... 
yeah. packages. Okay. Yeah. Were you still wanting to do the one hour discussion after the last of the interviews or did you want to move it up to the, the 14th? If they, the last are on the This 13th. is where we have flexibility depending how many there are. You know, if yeah. there are not that many, we could maybe do the 13th, otherwise come back on the 14th. But I'd say this is all tentative. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll touch bases on those dates on the 4th when we know how many applications there are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so are we adjourning the meeting, Chair? Yes, meeting is adjourned. Wait, wait didn't Kathy have one more thing? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. At the end of the meeting? Yes. No, not at this point. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right.